Steve Spurrier, the Blue Devils this week uh, took on the Maryland Terrapins homecoming right here at Wallace Wade Stadium. And uh, it was not a very happy homecoming, Coach. Uh, the final score, 34 to 24. Uh, your team lost by 10 points. It was uh, one of those games, it was, it was played in spurts. You had a good start uh, there, and then uh, things kind of went dry for you in the middle half, and then a productive finishing. Bob, we had them 16 to nothing, and we're, we were really playing well on both sides of the ball, and, and then I think uh, we dropped that punt. Uh, you know, White Smith caught the ball, and, and we had sort of a block on, so we, we weren't trying for a return, and he got the ball poked out of his hands, and so we fumbled there, and then we were down there again, and uh, first and goal to the 10-yard line, and we had a pass play called, and Anthony threw one of the worst passes he's thrown all year. Yeah. He threw it right smack to the linebacker with not one of our receivers even close by. So those couple of plays, and in the second half, uh, Maryland really got some momentum going, and uh, we had trouble stopping them, and then offensively, when we got the ball, we didn't go score every time. And, uh, but still at the end there, we threw one down to Walter Jones that uh, if Anthony could have kept him in bounds, mm -hmm. uh, at least we'd onside kick to maybe have had a chance to win the game. But it turned out it didn't work out for us. A very dry third quarter. That was one of the most uh, dominating third quarters by an opponent I believe I've seen. I thought that it was going to be a record. Uh, it might have still been a record. We had the ball three plays, and then we had it about three or four more. So at one time, it looked like our offense was going to have about three plays in one quarter. Mm -hmm. And, and we, I think we lost five yards on that possession. So uh, we had a tough time stopping them. Maryland must have made 75% of their third downs. And that's something that we've been pretty good uh, this year, stopping the opponent on third. But today, we, we weren't very good. And Maryland had not been a good third down team all year, hitting 43% of their third downs. What was the difference today? I don't know the exact reason, Bob. Uh, they threw and caught the ball very well. Neil O'Donnell's fine quarterback. We knew that. And when we had a chance to sack him, we, we couldn't grab a hold of him very well. He, he just made some great individual plays. And then we didn't cover very well. Uh, we're playing man to man. They got guys wide open. Uh, I don't know what our guys were thinking, but it was a very disappointing day because uh, we started out playing so well. And then we just looked like a very average Humpty football team there at the end. All right, we're going to take a look at the highlights of this Duke-Maryland game, as well as a couple of other features, our 100 years of Duke football, a player feature. We'll get some player comments also about today's homecoming loss. All coming up next on the Duke Football Show with Steve Spurrier. Coach, is this some sort of a jinx? Uh, just what's, <laughs> you, you get yeah. some offense generated, but just can't poke it in the well, end Well, uh, to open the ball game, I think we got a holding or clipping penalty on the kickoff again. Mm -hmm. And uh, our special teams, Bob, really upset me today. Uh, we had a chance to do some things, and uh, it was one area we definitely lost the football game. I know our defense struggled, but our special team play was, was very poor. We let a kickoff hit the ground. Uh, we fumbled a punt, and then we started on our 10-yard line twice. Uh, one time we had the penalty, and another time uh, Quentin just couldn't catch the kickoff. But we did make a few first downs, then we get down there and stalled a little bit. Uh, we're just not executing, throwing and catching real sharp, uh, pass blocking, running. We just shoot, we, you know, to go 90 yards, odds are against it. But we did get it up to midfield, and, and, but then we had to punt the ball. All right, let's go now to those first half highlights. We'll pick up the action on Duke's second possession of the first half, and it's first down and 10 at Duke 46 yard line. Roger Boone will run uh, for five yards to the Maryland 49 yard line. Second down and five, Anthony Dilwig to the air to Randy Cuthbert for five yards, moving it to the Maryland 44. Later in the drive, first down and 10 at the 33-yard line, Dilwig drops back to pass. It's John Rimaszewski out of the backfield for 10 yards, taking it to the 22-yard line. Very next play, Roger Boone to the left side for five yards to the 17. And on second down and five, Dilwig will throw to Clarkston Hines as he lobs it for the 17-yard touchdown pass. Peterson's extra point attempt is good, making it 7-0 Duke. On Duke's next possession, we pick it up first down and 10 at the Duke 37-yard line. Dilwig to Cuthbert in the left flat. He'll pick up seven yards to the Duke 44-yard line. Two plays later, Dilwig gets Walter Jones on a crossing pattern. Jones gets 13 yards as the second quarter comes to an end. They change ends of the field, and on third down and two from the Maryland 30, Dilwig drops back, decides to keep it. He gets loose down the left sideline for 21 yards down to the Maryland nine-yard line. Now on first down and goal from the nine, Dilwig, his pass is picked off by Saylor in the end zone. He returns it up the right side 19 yards, but flags are on the play. 
And on a first down and 16 from the Maryland three, O'Donnell back to pass on first down. He is sacked by Mark Allen for a safety. Now on the uh, first to play for the Maryland Terrapins following the change of possession, O'Donnell is at the Duke 39-yard line. He's chased out of the pocket, hit, fumbles, and it is recovered by John McDonald for the Blue Devils. First down and 10 from the 20-yard line. Boone finds a hole for 13 yards, taking it out to the 34. Roger again gets nine yards on a first down play, out to the 43. And for the third time in a row, Boone runs left for nine more yards, moving it to the 48. Anthony Dilday will now go to the air on first and 10 to Walter Jones over the middle for 16 yards, moving it to the Maryland 32-yard line. It's now third down and nine as Dilwig again goes to the air, this time to Dave Colonna on the right sideline for 10 yards to the Maryland 21. Randy Jones will run a draw play now for seven yards on a first down and five, getting it to the Maryland seven. And on third down and goal from the six, Dilwig to the air to Keith Ewell on a little post pattern for the touchdown. Peterson's extra point is good. It's 16-0, Duke leading Maryland. But the Terrapins will uh, start to move now, and their first touchdown is set up by this play on a first and 10 from the 41. Johnson, a huge hole. He'll ramble for 40 yards before McCracken brings him down at the Duke 19-yard line. It is now at the Duke 13, first down and goal. Beasley takes a pitch out left and goes into the end zone for the touchdown. The extra point is good, making it 16-7 Blue Devils. On the next Maryland possession, the Blue Devils have held. The Armist punts, and Smith will field it. He gets drilled by Green, fumbles the football, and Green recovers at the Duke 17-yard line, setting up this third down and three. From the 10, O'Donnell to the air to Vernon Joins for the touchdown. Plucky's extra point attempt is good. It's 16-14 at the half. At halftime for this homecoming game, the 1938 Iron Duke football team was honored. This was their 50th anniversary, the reunion of this ball club, a great team that went undefeated, untied, and unscored on in 1938, played in the Rose Bowl, and went uh, almost 60 minutes there without giving up a point, but eventually lost 7-3. to three. But 31 members of this team came back for this 50th reunion. And, Coach, uh, they were kind of happy at halftime. You were up, but then uh, things kind of went wrong in that third quarter, as we talked about. Well, I tell you what, it's great to see the, the old guys back. Uh, that 38 team, a uh, great bunch of uh, not only football players, but mm -hmm. they're good people. And uh, we know a lot of them, and they came by the football office Friday. We were able to show them around and so forth, and it's always nice to have that group back. Uh, they are the standard by which all of the Duke teams shoot for now. Uh, undefeated season, I don't think we'll ever have the unscored upon. <laughs> we're just uh, hoping to have a shutout some game. But uh, they're the ones we all shoot for to try to do someday what they did. Okay, let's uh, now go to our second half highlights and see just how Maryland managed to gain the stranglehold on the Blue Devils. Our second half highlight starts out on Maryland's very first possession of the half. First down and 10 at the 24-yard line. Dennis Spinelli goes up the middle for six yards to the 30-yard line. A couple of plays later on a second and 10 from the 35, O'Donnell will keep it on the option. Runs right for 17 yards, taking it out to the Duke 48-yard line. Now on second and seven from the 45, Spinelli grinds it up the middle again for seven yards. And on first down and 10 from the 38, Johnson takes the option pitch, runs left for nine yards to the Duke 29-yard line. It's now second and six from the 24, O'Donnell to the air. Hits a wide open Barry Johnson, and he will waltz into the end zone for the touchdown. The extra point attempt is uh, good, and it is Maryland 21 and Duke 6. Moving later in that third quarter, uh, the drive for Maryland has stalled, and on a fourth and one from the 13, Dan Plocky drills a 29-yard field goal that puts Maryland up 24 to 16. Gary Johnson. Early in the fourth quarter, on a fourth and eight, another Maryland drive has stalled. Plocky's 26-yard field goal puts Maryland up 27 to 16. The very next Maryland possession, we find a first and 10, a second and 14, rather, at the 38-yard line. O'Donnell hands off up the middle, flips right back to him. The old flea flicker, he hits Johnson straight down the side for 34 yards. He falls down at the four-yard line. And on second down and goal, Spinelli plows in for the touchdown. The extra point makes it Maryland 34 and Duke 16. The Blue Devils' next possession on a second down and one. We pick up the action with Dilwick going to the air to Jones for 13 yards down the middle. 
Again, Jones on the receiving end of a Dillwick pass. The very next play, this time for 20 yards as Maryland is giving Duke the underneath pattern. On a first down and 10 from the 38, Dillwick hits Clarkston Hines over the middle for 16 yards to the Maryland 22-yard line. And now on second down and goal from the Maryland 10-yard line, Roger Boone takes a screen pass from Dillwick. He'll score, and the Blue Devils now will go for two, and Dillwick drops back, throws it to Dave Kalana in the back of the end zone. His feet come down inbound, say the referee, and it's 24 to 34. Duke trails now by 10. The Blue Devils will get it back, and on a last gasp attack, uh, Dillwick to the air from his 29-yard line. He hits Dave Kalana for 25 yards to the 46. And the very next play comes right back to the air, this time to Don Parnell for 18 yards. But time runs out on the Blue Devils. They can't get it in the end zone, and the final score is Maryland 34, Duke 24. The Blue Devils now are 5-2 and two on the season, but uh, more importantly, Coach, this loss was a second conference loss. That has to hurt in your plans to, to challenge for the conference championship. Well, Bob, we haven't really been talking about the conference championship that much. I, I thought it was a little too premature. We, <laughs> we'd only had one win over Virginia. And the way we've been winning, uh, it might would have looked foolish for us to think that we can line up with uh, Clemson's and NC State's and those guys. And uh, we certainly didn't want to give the other team something to put on their board that Duke's thinking about the conference championship right now. We're just trying to have an outstanding season, and we're still in good shape. I told Rich McGeorge and Carl Franks, uh, our assistant coaches, who've been uh, with me here at Duke when I was an assistant, I said, we're five and two right now, and we're usually three and four. Uh, <laughs> in 81 and 82, and even last year, we were three and four after the first seven games. So we're still in position to have one of the best years around here in a long, long time. Uh, we gotta play better, we gotta play smarter, but we got to get our enthusiasm back. It's disappointing losing to Maryland. Hadn't beaten them in 16.